This past September, DxO Photo Lab 9 rolled out one of its biggest updates ever, introducing powerful new AI masking tools. To help beginners get the most out of these features, I'm sharing five essential AI masking tips that will help you create cleaner selections, speed up your edits, and unlock more creative local adjustments. So let's jump right in. The first tip is to start off with predefined masks. To demonstrate, let's mask this person. If you're a beginner, your first instinct might be to simply point and click, as I'm doing here. And while that's already much easier than using control points in previous DxO versions, it can still be a bit time consuming, and it tends to clutter up the layers panel. What you might not know is there is a faster, more efficient way. DxO Photo Lab comes with nine predefined AI masks that can automatically detect common subjects like sky, foreground, background, people, and more, all with a single click. To use it, just click the control, then from the list, choose the option that best fits your subject, in this case, people. As you can see, with just one click, the person is perfectly selected, and the layers panel stays neat with only a single layer. One great thing about DxO's predefined masks is that they're not limited to just people, a restriction you often see in other raw editors like Capture One. In this example, I'll try masking all these birds. As you would imagine, using manual object selection would be extremely tedious. Fortunately, the predefined masks have this type of subject covered as well. I'll simply choose Animal, and just like that, the entire selection is taken care of with a single click. The next tip is to pair AI masks with other masking tools. Another advantage of DxO's masking overhaul is it didn't just make AI masking accurate and intuitive. It also made it fully interoperable with other masking options. Perfect for times the AI mask alone doesn't get the job done. To illustrate, let's mask this tree. From the predefined mask list, flowers looks like the closest match. So I'll select that. Switching to the black and white mask view, you can see it handled the complex outer edges quite well. However, it missed the small holes and gaps within the tree. Notice how the mask's interior is almost completely solid white. Fortunately, this is easy enough to fix. Because AI masks can be refined by other tools, I'll use a control line to subtract from the mask. Holding the Alt or Option key to subtract, I'll drag to cover the tree. I'll move the picker to an area of the sky I want to target. To better view the mask, I'll switch to black and white view. As you can see, the mask is now more precise. The gaps and holes are now correctly accounted for in the mask. Of course, you can keep refining further with other tools. For example, I'll add a control point to clean up a few remaining spots. And there you go, a far more precise mask with just a little help from the control line and control point. The third tip is to copy and reuse masks to save time. One of the biggest advantages of AI masking is how easily you can duplicate and reuse your masks, either within the same image or across multiple images. Let's start off with reusing a mask in the same photo. This image has a complicated foreground with a lot of trees and tricky edges along the horizon. I'll use AI masking tools to create a precise mask of the foreground. There, the mask is done. And while it did take a lot of clicks, the result is very accurate. Next, let's move on to mask the sky and water. If you're a beginner, you might repeat the previous masking process. However, a much faster way is to reuse the mask we've already made, because the sky and water are simply the inverse of the foreground. To do that, I'll duplicate the mask by right-clicking the layer and choosing Invert Mask. As you can see, with just two clicks, we get a perfectly accurate mask, no need to start over. The second way to save time is by applying the same mask to other images. This is only possible because DxO introduced predefined masks which can automatically detect the same subject in different photos. 
To start off, let's edit one image. I'll use predefined masks to brighten and increase the saturation of the subject while desaturating and lowering the contrast of the background. There, the adjustment is done. Next, I'll go to the library panel. I'll copy the adjustment. Select the other photos and paste the adjustment. After a few moments, you'll see the same local adjustments applied across all the selected images. A huge time saver when editing a batch of similar shots. The fourth tip is to use shortcut keys. Knowing just a few key combinations can dramatically speed up your workflow. To demonstrate, let's work on this image. I'll start off by adding a gradient tool to simulate the effect of a graduated filter. As you can see, the hill is protruding the horizon and incorrectly included in the mask. Let's use AI masking to remove the hill. While you could manually click the subtract button to change modes, a faster method is to just use a shortcut key. I'll simply hold down the Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows key, and DxO confirms the subtract operation is in effect by changing the cursor to a minus sign and highlighting the subtract button. I'll make the selection. And now the mask is refined. Notice that a sub-layer has been created with a small mask badge indicating a subtraction operation. Next, let's adjust the foreground. I'll duplicate the layer. And instead of digging through the menus, I'll use the shortcut Shift and D. As you can see, the layer is duplicated instantly. To invert the mask, I'll press Shift and I. And now the foreground is perfectly masked for an exposure adjustment. Next, let's create a new layer to adjust the boats in the foreground. Interestingly, this behavior varies between Mac and Windows. On a Mac, DxO automatically creates a new layer when you make a selection, as you can see here. On Windows, it creates a sub-layer instead. It is strange to have this inconsistency. In any case, if you want to force to create a brand new layer on either system, just press Shift plus N and that creates the layer. Next, use the AI mask to select the boats. Finally, let's refine the mask and correct the small errors with a brush. To append to the existing mask rather than creating a new one, hold down the Shift key while brushing. This creates a new sub-layer that adds to the mask. So as you can see, knowing just a handful of shortcut keys goes a long way towards speeding up your edits and keeping your workflow smooth. The fifth tip is to know how to subtract using a predefined mask. One of the standout features of DxO's AI masking implementation is its full interoperability with all the other masking tools. But does that flexibility extend to predefined masks? Let's find out using this image. I'll start by adding a gradient tool to mimic a physical graduated filter. Once again, notice how the people are protruding above the horizon and are incorrectly being included in the mask. Let's remove them. To do this, I'll try subtracting them with a predefined mask. I'll hold Option or Alt and select People from the predefined mask list. Normally, holding Option or Alt switches to the subtraction operation, but watch what happens. Although a new sublayer for the predefined mask is created, the operation remains set to Add. The modifier key has no effect here. So is there any other way to make a predefined mask subtract rather than add? Fortunately, the answer is yes, but you need to do it through the menu. And here's how. First, right-click on the predefined mask sublayer. Second, choose Invert Shape. This flips the masked area from on to off, effectively achieving the subtraction you need. So there you have it, 5 DxO Photolab 9 AI masking tips. I hope you found this video helpful. As you've seen, DxO's masking implementation is polished, intuitive, and powerful. And with these tips, hopefully you'll be able to create masks faster and more effectively, no matter how complex. So do you have your own favorite masking tricks? Share them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.